You're watching NTC News, DeKalb County's only television news source. On the campus of Northern Illinois University and from the Northern Television Center, this is NTC News Tonight. A fight at a local party leaves one man stabbed and another in police custody. And Kishwaukee Health Group is expanding across DeKalb. Good evening, I'm Kyle Jacobs. And I'm Desney Norton. One DeKalb man has been charged for stabbing someone during a party fight. DeKalb police were sent to this address on College Avenue after a fight broke out early Sunday. Police say a group of people were upset after they weren't allowed into the party and began a fight. That's when police say 22-year-old Juan Rodriguez came out and stabbed someone. He has been charged with one count of aggravated battery. New information about former NIU police officer Andrew Rifkin's alleged a sexual assault case. The discovery that the victim held on to two text messages between the two of them. Rifkin's attorney wants to see the contents of those messages and he wants to know why prosecutors have not turned over the information. The text took place the night of and the day after the alleged incident. Kish Health System is planning on buying the DeKalb Clinic in Sycamore in 2015. When Kish Health purchases the clinic, it will become one of the seven primary care facilities under the Kish Health System Physicians Group. No changes will be made in the service of the clinic after the purchase. This will open opportunities for 125 people. Speaking of things being bought, all of the homes at Evergreen Village will soon be just open space. Josh Augustin has the developing story on the demolition of one of Sycamore's oldest communities. We're taking a walk through Evergreen Village, which will simply be open space by April of next year. Now that residents are going elsewhere, images like this material from a broken down unit, or like these bulldozers, are very much commonplace. Most residents have left and officials say that they choose where they want to go. Some are buying homes, some are buying trailers, you know, moving to another trailer parks. Um, but basically, they can go wherever they want to go. Before the units are torn down, inspection is done for asbestos, approval is received from the state, and utilities are cut off, as these color-coded charts for each unit show in the main office. Officials say the hope is that in the future, residents see that their best interest was in mind. My hope is, is that each of the residents, once the mobile home park has been, all the residents have been relocated and the, all the units have been demolished, that everyone can come back to the park at the next flood event and say, thank goodness no one else is living in harm's way. A former resident says that relocating from Evergreen Village was a vague and distant process, but a loss that needed to be taken. It was, it was bittersweet. It was, uh, I was, I was very excited to get out to move in with my fiance, but I was also sad because I, I paid for this house. I worked hard. I, pay, I paid off this house. It is mine now. And as the demolition of the units continues, sites like these stairs leading to what once was a home will be gone as well. I'm Josh Augustin reporting for NCC News. Only a few residents remain, while the majority have moved into the Sycamore DeKalb area. People who miss Dog Pound Deli can celebrate because their favorite sandwich place is back. Dog Pound Deli had its grand reopening in Stevenson Hall on Tuesday. It was located in Douglas Hall before the hall closed down. Dog Pound Deli is known for their delicious sub sandwiches that you can customize to satisfy your taste buds. Going green, that's what NIU is doing and saving money in the process. Dan Kenny flips the switch on NIU's ongoing LED project. What you see here is NIU's LED lighting initiative taking full flight. With every hammer and a nail, NIU is reaching closer to its goal of covering 45% of campus with these LED lights this year. One single LED light has the lifespan of 25 incandescent bulbs. A typical LED light only consumes about 8 watts of energy, whereas the bulbs NIU uses absorbs nearly 38 watts of energy. Uh, well, the LED is the premium bulb. It's the most energy efficient bulb of anything on the market at the moment. 
Many of the lighting units that are being replaced are up to 50 years old. Some of these outdated lighting units cost roughly 72 cents per hour to run. With the new LED lights, NIU saves nearly 20% of their money spent on energy alone. Instead of having to be changed every two years, they get changed 10 or 15 years. And that is actually true. And that's why you wait for the quality to come along before you jump into the, um, the product itself. How many technicians does it take to change a light bulb? A more relevant question may be, how many will it take to change 1,368 lighting units that NIU hopes to get done within the next few years? Up until this year, NIU has only replaced 268 of those lights. But since the summer, over 200 more lights have been replaced, a much faster pace compared to years past. Obviously the first dramatic difference is just the energy that's going to be consumed. Uh, NIU is going to save a lot of money in their energy costs by the conversion. Uh, also, you're going to save time in not having to replace bulbs as often. Things are beginning to look a bit brighter here at NIU. In DeKalb, this is Dan Kenny, NTC News. For more information on the Green Initiative, visit niu.edu slash go green. Well, the way it's been looking, we're going to be looking at rain through those new lights. <laughs> That's right, and we have Brittany Merlo here to let us know, is this rain ever going to stop? Sure seems like it isn't, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but actually, this time last year, it was snowing. We had our first recorded snowfall this time last year, so I'll take the rain over anything. But let's take a look at tomorrow's outlook for our area. We're going to see temperatures in the lower to upper 60s. We're going to see some rain in Chicago and Kankakee, possibly, but most of it's going to be pushed off to the east. So for more on this, stick with us. You're watching NTC News Tonight. everyone. I know this week has been absolutely dreary and wet and again we woke up with it this morning. We saw a high of 53 degrees today though and tonight we're going to see a low of 47 degrees. Now that is about six degrees lower than what we're currently experiencing right now so we're not going to see too much of a cool off between now and tonight. So definitely open those windows tonight, get that fresh air in before it gets too cold and enjoy your night. Now let's look at a local weather cam. Today we saw Rain, again, dreary, dark day, puddles forming all over campus. We saw rainfall just today about 0.5 inches. Total since Monday, we've seen about 1.2 inches. That rain has just been coming down on us here in DeKalb. Now, since this fall, and we've gotten all this rain, the leaves are going to cause extra slick roads and clogged drains. So be careful when you're out there driving. Make sure you're um, you know, <laughs> pay attention to those leaves, pay attention to that water. There could be flooded streets, there could be slippery leaves out there. So pay attention when you're driving. Now this is what happened and why we were stuck in so much rain. We had this jet stream dip all the way from the north, all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. And what that did is that brought the moist air up towards us and it was able to cause showers off to the east and with us. And we had this low pressure system just sitting there. So if you had a migraine this week, that's what it was from most likely. Now, good news, it's starting to push off to the east and it'll be gone by tonight. And what's going to follow right after that is this cool air from up north is going to follow towards us. So we're going to see a little bit of cool off after Thursday. But let's look at tonight, mostly cloudy skies. Those clouds are going to start to push away as the rain starts to move east. We might have an isolated shower or two pop up, but it's only about a 20% chance of you actually seeing some more rain tonight. We're going to see a low of 47 degrees. As we move on to tomorrow, the clouds are going to remain in the area, but they will eventually go away and the sun's going to pop back out and we're going to see about 10% chance of rain. Now tomorrow night, mostly clear. Those clear skies are going to let it get cooler at night, so we're going to see a low of 47 degrees, no chance of rain. It is finally going to leave our area. So let's look at our seven-day forecast. Thursday, partly cloudy as the rain moves away, 63. Friday, the wind is going to pick up. We're going to see gusts up to 25 miles per hour. Temperatures are going to be about the same. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, that sun's going to be out. We're going to see a beautiful weekend, especially for our game Saturday. 
when it starts at 4 o'clock, it's going to be about 54 degrees, but that's actually going to cool throughout the night. So as you see, we're going to go to a low of 33 degrees. So if you're going out to the game, dress warm because the temperatures will be cooling off. And as we move into Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, temperatures are going to go back up to the upper 50s. Stay there. Sun will come out. And we'll have a nice week. And that's it for weather. Let's send it back to the desk. Mothers on WIC will be seeing less whole milk in the fridge. And another TV clash between Illinois' candidates for governor. Let's take a look at the news making headlines across today's state lines. Governor Pat Quinn and Republican Bruce Rauner defended their records on minority hiring, public safety, and gun control last night in Chicago. The debate heavily focused on issues impacting African American voters. It was the second televised debate for Illinois' next governor. Beginning this month, people in the Illinois WIC Nutrition Program will be drinking low-fat milk. State is following heart-healthy recommendations of doctors. Whole milk will be provided only to children under age 2. Everyone else will be able to choose between skim or 1%. A state legislative panel has put off voting on rules for high-volume oil and gas fracking until next month. An administrative rules committee is struggling with how to guarantee that rules are fair to the industry while protecting the environment. Illinois businesses placed more than 212,000 Help Wanted ads last month. Most of the ads are for full-time workers. The State Department of Employment Security says the leading urban areas are Chicago, Bloomington, Peoria, Decatur, Springfield, and Rockford. And that's today's State Lines. A second person in America has now been diagnosed with the Ebola virus. While a fight on a bus in Connecticut ends with a person shot and killed, here's what's happening in today's World Watch. A second health care worker has tested positive for Ebola. The health care worker was among those treating Thomas Eric Duncan at Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital in Dallas. The employee reported a fever yesterday and was immediately isolated. And we now know that on Monday, the worker was on a commercial jet from Cleveland with more than 130 other passengers. A man who attempted to stab passengers on a casino tour bus was shot to death by a Connecticut state trooper overnight on Interstate 95. Two passengers were stabbed and another person was injured while a bullet from the officer's gun ricocheted off the pavement. The driver pulled over at a construction site and flagged down a trooper who fired after the stabber advanced on him. More than a dozen Texas abortion clinics are now back open temporarily. The clinics were forced to close because of a new law requiring clinics to have hospital level standards. The Supreme Court has ordered Texas not to enforce the law until a series of appeals work their way through court. Olympic sprinter Oscar Pistorius is back in court for day three of his sentencing hearing. He was found guilty last month for the unintentional killing of his girlfriend Riva Steenkamp on Valentine's Day last year. The state's prosecutor argued with Pistorius' social worker that he should not go free if he needs psychological treatment. And that's today's World Watch. Hello everybody, I'm Erica Burgess. Not the happiest homecoming weekend if you're a Husky football fan. Central Michigan knocked off NIU off their 28-game winning streak at Husky Stadium. CMU's running back Thomas Rawls rushed for 270 yards with two touchdowns, but NIU finished the night with just 110 yards rushing on 33 carries. Drew Hare completed 18 of 33 passes for 231 yards and two touchdowns, also throwing his first interception of the season. Joan Breskison's caught six passes for 76 yards. And Mike Santa Catarina sparked up some positive energy with an interception. But the Huskies are moving forward, and this Saturday they welcome Miami, Ohio to Husky Stadium. The Red Hawks are 1-6 and, and lost to Akron this past weekend. Kickoff is set for 4 o'clock. 
and week six of the NFL season. And here's a little update on some of our former Husky players. Jimmy Ward of the San Francisco 49ers had three tackles Monday night in their win against the Rams. Ward also partially blocked, punt, blocked a punt in the second quarter. And right tackle Doug Free of the Dallas Cowboys helped pave the way for the upset against one of the best defenses in the league. Dallas beat the Seahawks on Sunday. Free and the O-line only allowed one sack the entire game. And finally, Ken Bishop, also of the Dallas Cowboys, was inactive this week. But we'll, as the season goes along, we'll have some more updates on our former Husky players. And to some NIU volleyball, sophomore Jenna Radke is really stepping up this year. She's the second this is the second time she's been named MAC Player of the Week in her career. Between the last two matches, Radke finished with 11 blocks and 8 digs on defense. And NIU returns home this weekend for a pair of matches. The first on Friday against Akron at 7 o'clock and again on Saturday against Buffalo at 7.30. And that's all we have for sports. We'll see you next time. There is no place like home. Getting home safely is just a click away. But making sure your child is in the right seat is just one of the steps down the road to safer travels. I don't know how it works. Find the right seat for your little one's age and size. We saw what you told us. There's no better way to get home safely. Know for sure that your child is in the right seat. Get all the facts at safercar.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. An NIU student wants to know that whether he's wearing heels or blogging about the latest in fashion, he's only being himself. NTC photojournalist Lauren Baker shows us a first look at the daily life of this Devo fashionista. Crosswire or Queen Crosswire. My website is www.thecrosswire.com. I am the founder, CEO, main writer, main blogger, photographer. It's mine. It's fashion is really like undescribable to me. It's kind of hard because it's so many different levels of fashion. I think whatever your fashion is, that's what fashion is. I think fashion has many different levels, as I said before. Um, I think if you're quote unquote plus size or quote unquote thick, skinny, whatever, you have to wear stuff that's appropriate for you and you have to dress a little differently. Um, I think if you're a gay male and you're wearing female's clothing, you have to dress a little differently. You have to make sure everything is okay. If you're a female, I think that you have to dress according to your style. From uh, the first time I actually wore all of this stuff that people say I wear, like heels and leggings or whatever they want to say that I wear every day. Um, it was actually New Year's Eve and I didn't have anything to wear and I just all of a sudden thought of wearing heels because I'm like, I don't want to look like everybody else. Everybody's wearing the jeans, everybody's buying Jordans every Saturday. I was starting to look like everybody else. So I just took the fashion risk to actually wear them and I was very scared at first. But the reception that I got at the party was very successful. So I think that now that when I go places, it doesn't even phase me. I'm relatable because I feel like at the end of the day, I'm still real. I'm not trying to, you know, come on campus acting like I'm a celebrity or something, or it might come off that way, but that's really, I'm very approachable. I don't like, you know, I think I'm relatable on so many levels. I still go through the same struggles, you know, my car still goes in negative, um, still be running around here with no gas. I still have a meal plan. I still stay on campus just like everybody else. My just appearance is just different. The way I act is different. And I think that's all, this is just what you need in life. And I think that's why they can relate to that because some people, they show their struggle on the outside and you will never see that. So I think that's why a lot of people respect me because you will never see me down or out. I would say that every day is a new day and something could change every day. And if you're willing to work hard, you can change everything. I feel like people are stuck in these little bubbles and they think that they can't grow outside of that or they're just so like over everything and they just don't see the future. I think that everybody's so stuck at what's happening right now. Like if you fail a test, there's gonna be a gazillion tests after that. Since fashion changes so much, I think that we should all change our fashion like on a daily or weekly or seasonally, whichever feels comfortable. But I think that what you wear should express how you feel. So if you feel 
very happy. <laughs> I think that you should dress like you're happy. I think that fashion changes with the area or the climate or the city or the state. I think that anywhere you go, you have to remember where you are and who you are. And I think that that'll help you get dressed every day. You need to have some type of self-esteem and some type of cockiness behind you because if you don't think you're the shit or you don't think you look like the shit, who's, who in the room is gonna think that? just love how fabulous he is. That it's always great. great to see someone who makes his own mold. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you all for being with us tonight. NTC News Tonight is produced and directed by students here at Northern Illinois University. Enjoy the rest of your evening.